Thank you. Uh, do you have the resources, the people, and money you need to protect the nation, uh, Mr. Olson? Thank you, Senator. I, I, we do, at, 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 from my vantage point in the, in the National Security Division, we are we have resources to 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 carry out our priority missions. Um, obviously, January 6 is a singular event that is stretching the resources of of our office and the U.S. Attorney's Office in D.C., which is handling that case. There are a number of people have been detailed around the country to support that. Do process. you need Do you need more money? Uh, any changes in the law to do your job? At this stage, I, I don't have any requests for more money or more authority, okay. uh, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, the vice president uh, equated January 6th with Pearl Harbor and 9-11. Do you agree with that? I, I in my view, it, it, you know, and if I may just begin by saying I, I it, with Senator Durbin and ranking uh, member Grassley, it was a, a day that must have been horrific to be directly involved in or be victimized on Capitol Hill and and I do think it was a singular event. I, I'm I'm reluctant to compare it to any prior events in, in our history because okay. from my vantage point it was unique and singular. Yeah. So uh the the courthouse in Portland was attacked a hundred nights in a row. Would you consider those people a candidate for domestic terrorism charges? I know that hundreds of people have been arrested, as we've discussed this morning. I don't have any information about whether or not, in any particular case, um, they would be you know, subject to. Well, uh, Senator Hirano said that people use violence to, for whatever purpose uh, to attack a courthouse for 100 nights in a row. How many people have been charged with uh, the Portland incident? Do you know? I, 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 I defer to Ms. Sanborn that it had data on the number Ms. of arrests. Sanborn? I don't have do you, number of do, do you know Ms. Sanborn? Uh, no, sir. I don't have Portland specifically in front of me. Okay. I would. Uh, okay. What I was well, referring to is well, 250 it, it, arrests it, it, over the yeah. whole summer. Well, here's my point. Uh, January 6 was a bad day. It was a terrible day, and people are being prosecuted. And I would encourage you to have the full force and weight of law against those who defile the Capitol. But these protests went on for a year. As you can see, this photo behind me, they were literally throwing. Molotov cocktails trying to kill police officers and I didn't hear a whole lot from my colleagues on the other side for an entire year. I guess that's what gets me more than anything else. Uh, I understand the scope of January 6th and I hope people are brought to justice, but this is, you know, it's got to be a two-way street. Let's talk about the world in which we live in now that we have a very brief time to do so. Uh, the fall of Afghanistan the takeover of Afghanistan by the Taliban, has that created additional national security threats to our homeland, Mr. Olson? As I, I think the, from my vantage point, international terrorism remains a priority. And, I, and I, if I may broaden my answer a bit, just to say that we continue to be very concerned about- Well, here's uh, my question. ISIS and Af and, and Afghanistan, uh, ISIS force. Here, here, here's my question. The country is now in the hands of the Taliban. Are Al Qaeda elements present in Afghanistan? Uh, we do see. I, I would say that we continue to see. Uh, cons we do continue to have concerns about both ISIS and Al Qaeda. What, capa what capability do we have available to us to detect terrorism activity on the ground in Afghanistan after the collapse? Senator, I think it might be not appropriate for me to go into particular. Well, capability. is it fair to say we've lost a lot of capability? I, I would be reluctant to characterize our the level of our capability. I, what I would say is that it remains a priority. So yeah, you, you can't tell this committee that that a lot of the assets we had available to us have been lost because the Taliban take over. You can't say that. Again, I'm, I'm reluctant to characterize the level of our, our intelligence capabilities. And have you been to the U.S. border, uh, southern border? Uh, it, uh, not, well, two, three years ago, I did go to the southern border. <clears throat> yes. I would urge you to go back. A lot has changed in the last two or three years. How many people have come across the border, uh, our southern border, from special interest countries? I don't have year. particular information. Possibly Ms. Sanborn does, but I don't Ms. have Sanborn, that. Ms. Sanborn, how many people have come across our southern border in the last year from special interest countries? Sir, I don't have that data. Have you been to the border? 
not in a very long time, sir. Well, I appreciate both of your service, but it's been three to 4,000. We've had dozens of people on the terrorist watch list coming across the southern border. Here's some advice. If you need more resources, you'll get it from me. But if I were you, I'd go to the border and check out what's going on because it's just a matter of time, in my humble opinion, that the broken southern border is going to be an entryway to international terrorists who are going to come here and kill a lot of Americans if we don't change policy. And I would urge you quickly to go to the border, get a handle on what's happening at the border, understand the relationship between the takeover of the Taliban in Afghanistan and the opportunity for more terrorist attacks coming our way through the border. So I would urge you to do that, and I'm surprised you haven't. Thank you very much. Thank you.